the 11 best Linux distributions for power users. All right. A free and open source software system. Linux spawns several distributions. Well, that's the understatement of the year. There's like a thousand distributions. But I love that they put number one Debian because honestly, Debian, you just can't go wrong. With Debian 12, it is so good for everybody. I will always recommend Debian. Debian is the bee's knees for distribution. So I love Debian 12.4. Uh, I love that that was the number one option for it. And honestly, it's good for every user's experience, users, new users. It just has a very simple, complex thing. Uh, you know, even on New Year's, I used to recommend Linux Mint a whole bunch. But honestly, Debian these days is pretty good even for a new user. Uh, their, their install experience has improved drastically, even though I'm kind of cursed. Oh man, number two is Gentoo. Wow. Okay, we're just jumping right into it. Okay, I think someone at TechMint might be trolling noobs, <laughs> but let's see what they're talking about on Gentoo. Gentoo is a distribution built for professional use <laughs> and experts <laughs> who take into consideration what packages they want to work on from the word go. Okay. The categories of developer systems network administrators, as such, it's not ideal for beginners in Linux. In other news, the the sky is blue and water is wet. No, a beginner should never try Gentoo. <laughs> Gentoo is recommended for those that want deeper understanding of the ins and outs of a Linux operating system. I mean, maybe like the kernel compiling and and where whether it's Portage or Emerge. I mean, eesh. I would not recommend anyone daily drive Gentoo. Really. Yeah. Gentoo is a distribution built for professional insane asylums. 100% agree with that, Ashlyn. That is really the, the, the take here. Okay. that This is bonkers. I would never recommend anybody try Gentoo. Gentoo is fun. And, and really where I see Gentoo is, let's say you wanted a very minimal boot up and you wanted to strip down kernel. Gentoo would be perfect for like, let's say you're setting up a kiosk. And you never really are going to be updating that. And you want to just throw up like a menu on the screen and you want a very minimal load. Gentoo would be perfect for these one-off kind of cases. But like daily driving Gentoo, uh, you have to be a very special person to do that. Or you just want to go around telling people you use Gentoo as a daily driver, which again, Kind of, kind of qualifies you as special, <laughs> but it is great for like low resource kiosks. Um, and it, honestly, it, it's known for like Chromium OS or Chrome OS and some of the other Linux distros that used it as a base and then modified, heavily modified Linux. Uh, so that's, that's Gen 2 in a nutshell. No, you should not. If you have to ask what, what Linux distribution you want to try, Gen 2 should not be on that list. All right. Ubuntu is number three. We all know how much I love Ubuntu. Um, some people like the GNOME aesthetic. And honestly, I, I kind of liked Unity back in like Ubuntu 18 days. That was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, obviously, it's still try to pull it in with this GNOME setup. It doesn't feel very good. The last time I loaded up in Ubuntu, it felt a little sluggish to me. And like launching Firefox from Snap was a bit slow. And uh, I don't know what else to say about Ubuntu. It used to be like top dog. Every noob should try it. But these days, I just don't recommend it at all. Um, if you want like an Ubuntu type clone, I, right now, Pop! OS, I think, does a better job. And it's a fork of Ubuntu. And, I, and it has that same kind of look and feel. But the, the Pop! OS team does a better job than Ubuntu, even though it's based on Ubuntu. Uh, with with GNOME and everything. I like Pop! OS's configuration of GNOME. I just particularly hate GNOME, and I don't like Ubuntu as a base anymore, mainly because of the snaps and some of the other questionable decisions they made over the years, which I made entire videos about. So that's all I got to say about Ubuntu. Again, not recommended. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Linux Mint, also, this is really cool. I, and I love their, their lead devel, developer of Linux Mint, Clem, has always been great. He always has so many great ideas. He was the first to drop Snap. He was one of the first ones to come out and say, hey, no more Snap. 
uh and it's just it's like this is bad i'm just gonna take it off and then we're gonna just use it as we always have and mint's always been a great experience so a lot of people end up like even vets end up just going i don't want to mess with it mint has a very stable update cycle very talented devs and a really good community so mint's always a, a good contender it is based on ubuntu but they do have another fork uh i think it's called lmde linux mint debian edition and it is also uh, starting to get a lot better. So you could actually do the Debian uh, Linux Mint, where it's all based on Debian, instead of the Ubuntu one, which traditional Mint, if you're unaware, is based on Ubuntu. But it's it's a pretty heavily modified Ubuntu these days with Clem at the helm. Uh, five, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, you know, this is a weird subject. I've talked about it in many videos. Um, what do I say about Red Hat? Uh, I've never really used RHEL Enterprise, uh, RHEL at all. You know, when it comes to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, I, I've touched it a little bit in business from a server CLI standpoint. I don't really recommend it for a desktop. And if you kind of want to mess around with it, there was CentOS I would recommend. These days, I recommend Rocky Linux. I've always liked Rocky. And that was made by the guy that originally made CentOS. There's a lot of drama surrounding Red Hat and all Red Hat based distros. I don't recommend it all. I don't I don't recommend anybody try these anymore. Uh, if you want to cut your teeth on them, you could use like Oracle, Alma, Rocky and learn about Red Hat that way through those channels. But Red Hat itself and a lot of its uh, s distributions, I don't recommend anybody learn them anymore. And I just say, hey, uh, it, a lot of people are walking away from them based on past drama, uh, especially in the, the IT space. So I don't I don't like them. Um, and I know Red Hat does a lot of different projects for the Linux community. Uh, it's just a personal preference, mainly because they kind of burned me a couple times in the IT space, specifically CentOS 8. If you're unfamiliar, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is supposed to give support for, you know, 10 years. Uh, and, and CentOS at that time, or CentOS, had 10-year support in CentOS 7. They released CentOS 8, and then a year later, they said, ah, just kidding. We're not doing 10 years, we're doing one year. And then everyone was scrambling in the business realm that was using CentOS to convert. So there's a couple IT people I know that had uh, upwards of, you know, a thousand different servers that they've migrated to CentOS 8, and then they, they were forced to, to migrate again. It's kind of wild. It's kind of wild, but it was my first distro. So uh, it was, was CentOS 6, I believe. And it's just kind of sad that they've, they've been so hostile to a lot of the open source community with their recent stuff. So again, when it comes to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS Stream is this bastardized version of what CentOS used to be. And it's between Fedora and, uh, and Red Hat. So between all the updates that's kind of what you get i don't recommend any rel so we're just going to move on from that and fedora is right after it fedora is more bleeding edge centos is below that and then rels uh all the way at the bottom for for update packages but i'm not going to recommend any of those it makes sense why they're recommended though yeah the debacle honestly i'm still i'm still mad more about the centos 8 debacle than i am about them closed sourcing or locking some of the source code behind like some weird uh developer license so yeah that's where i'm kind of like on red hat it's not a bad distro from a technical standpoint and honestly i've always liked it from a technical standpoint it's just the politics behind red hat is the big catching point that i'm like yeah <laughs> So that's why I'm like, ah, eh, moving on. Let's let's just not talk about any of that. I'm it's been it's such a you know, beat that horse to death kind of thing. So uh Kali Linux. Uh Kali Linux, I said, was kind of worthless in a past, you know, a tier list. Kali Linux is kind of known as uh I call it like a script kitty distro. It's great if you're starting to get in the like the security realm. Kali Linux is usually what people install first when they're learning because they don't even know what these tools are. They don't even use like Aircrack, Multigo, Metasploit, all these other ones. And it has all those just kind of like right there in the applications menu. So if you're just getting into the security realm, it's kind of nice how all these are just 
on there by default and it's a good learning experience but while i say it's for script kiddies and noobs is because most security engineers or, or people in that are professionals working in the field they're never going to have this loaded unless they're really lazy most of them are just going to be running regular debian and then they're going to install what they need they're just going to install like the metasploit or you know whatever they need uh for for what they're doing a lot of them aren't going to be using kali and if for the ones that are kind of lazy but know what they're doing honestly they're probably going to use parrot linux instead of kali linux kali linux is a little too bloated and there's too much going on with it like they have like a windows you know mode that makes linux look like windows and some other like you know cliche type crap that no one really uses and it's just it's an interesting distro for noobs but you're gonna try it but no you're gonna move on <laughs> it's just gonna be a it's gonna be a brief pit stop it's not a bad distro for what it is but just know it's good for cutting your teeth learning about the tools and then just kind of going out and doing your own thing when you learn more about linux and you know what you're doing but uh as far as a distro eh, that's kind of where it's at arch linux man arch linux is like my number two i always love it uh right behind debian arch is so bleeding edge that you just get a little bit of everything and i love the freedom and and the the cutting edge that you get with arch linux so when anytime there's something new coming out like let's say i wanted that 6.6.6 kernel that got released this week i would be installing vanilla arch and just going at it so awesome and uh you know that's that's kind of where i'm at with arch i use it a lot in just building up stuff real quick it's a very fast install uh, but obviously it can be tricky for those that have never installed it before it's just very lightweight and i love it like you can install arch with 100 packages and, and have like a cli and you know i think the last arch install i did using my arch titus script took i clocked it about two minutes on bare metal actually it was under two minutes so i did it in less than 120 seconds and uh, had a full blown server sitting there at my CLI with Arch installed on a brand new system. So I love Arch and I think that's not going to go anywhere. Uh, OpenSUSE, this was an interesting one. And, you know, you used to just kind of dismiss it, but actually we, we, we were on OpenSUSE for like 30 days or something. And it was, I think Ashlyn in chat and some other people that mentioned it. And I was like, Hey, yeah, I think, it, uh, Harry, Harry, uh, also mentioned it. And it was, it was not bad. Uh, I liked it. The, I think it was the OPI open package installer or whatever it was, uh, was great. It was like the AUR from arch and it worked well. I was able to get all my packages. Didn't really have any problems. The rollbacks were pretty good. You had YAS, which was like a control center that most Linux installs don't have. I mean, I don't know how useful YAS was, but then again, a lot of them just kind of, I like, I prefer the CLI anyways, but for someone just learning Linux, I, I think that would be good. Uh, so I don't really have anything bad to say about SUSE. It, it was okay. You know, I, I don't know if I put it in my top five, but it would definitely be in my top 10. So it's, it's an interesting one. And it, I, I can, don't have anything bad to say about my time. And I was on Tumbleweed. Uh, there's Leap, which is a stable release, and Tumbleweed, and we tried Tumbleweed, and it was pretty bleeding edge, but it also is very stable for all the crap that I do, and I, I'm usually pretty good about breaking distros. I never broke it, so how's that going for it? MX Linux. Uh, is this the final one? That's the final one. Uh, MX Linux I used to recommend quite a bit because Debian used to be so unfriendly and MX Linux always had a better installer and they had kind of a, a better setup out of the box with a lot of tools. These days, I think, you know, hey, uh, Debian does j just as good as a job, if if not better, because this is just a fork of Debian. And well, it was really good. And it, it I think MX Linux also had a better driver ship than standard stock Debian because there was you didn't have to search for like non-free firmwares and stuff like that. Debian ships with all that stuff now. So a bit redundant these days where, you know, Debian and Arch kind of cover everything. 
Uh, I would have loved to see like Nix OS. That would probably not be in my top five for sure. So uh, for me, it's like Debian, Arch, Nix OS, and uh, what other distro? Pro probably throw in some more unique distros. I don't know if Arctics would make it on there for me, being uh, the OpenRC. But I know for sure the top three for me that I was like, hey, they're so different, but so good is, is those, you know. Debian, Arch, and Nix OS. I think everyone should try those three. They're just so good, and I love them to death. Uh, the rest of these on this list, eh, I think I gave a good breakdown. It's not a bad list, honestly. When it comes to Linux distribution lists, I've seen worse. It's just most of these lists, they just kind of Google it and just toss it up there. So for me, my list would be, here's the three Linux distros you need to try, and it would be Debian, Arch, and NixOS. And maybe OpenSUSE. <laughs> if you want a fourth one, I'd probably toss it in there. It's different enough. Uh, so I like that one. And uh, the other ones have their time and place, but typically those would be just pit stops on your Linux journey. So that's my thoughts on the 11 best Linux distros.